out what is up peeps what is up how y'all doing how y'all doing it's your girl to wary babes it is thursday march 21st 2024 we ain't gonna waste no time with all that other stuff we just gonna knock right into it honey because boo got some highlights guys and i i tagged some from yesterday because you know you know your girl you know how i am and I like being right. And y'all let me know because I Googled this yesterday when Brooklyn was telling Chase about, you know, John, you know, what he did and how she threatened to sue and how he told her that that was illegal. It's a fact that Chase, once again, you wrong, just like you wrong when you let my man Dante run with those people by himself. I don't care what nobody says. I'm glad you're feeling like you, you should put turn your badge in. Let, let Dante chase down two people uh, two, two people by himself. But, but we're going to talk about that highlight real quick. So, yes, Chase, you were wrong because you did most definitely sue the federal government. It's called the de facto absolute immunity for fed workers who violate the constitution john violated the constitution when he questioned danny without his parents are a lawyer mm -hmm. look it up sixth amendment in the u.s constitution it's an amendment i looked it up google it i was like okay hold up okay are they trying to rewind because I, I you just can't just be going around here now you can't threaten to, to sue some you can't threaten somebody who's illegally threatening you all your persons detaining you yeah it's all illegal mm-hmm it's all oh, about the detainment workers. They'll find a reason to detain you. And I'm pretty sure John could have found a reason, but he looked, it was bad judgment. It was bad judgment, which later on him and Anna talked about. And ew, Kim testing. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see the Kim testing with Anna and John? I'm sorry, guys. Everybody's like gaga goo goo for Anna and John, but I, I, I don't feel it. I, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. That's just me, though. But the Kim test with Eva and Sonny, that was like looking at ice cream melt. Vanilla ice cream melt. Yeah, it was like melted ice cream. It, that's, what it, that's exactly what... There was no fire. There was no fireworks. There was no... I was so disappointed because I was looking for that, and I was like, ooh, is this going to be, you know, some intensity there? There was none. It was... Kim test failed on, on both attempts. Y'all let me know how y'all felt about the Kim test. You guys are so awesome about putting your highlights in the highlights in the comment section. And you know I love reading them. But moving along to today's show. <laughs> moving along to today's show. I just had to talk about it because it bothered me. I was like, oh my gosh. But y'all know who has a fire odd enough I almost wanted them to take off their clothes and start doing it on the table, kind of, Kim. Nina and Drew. I don't know. Did y'all feel that? Did y'all feel the fire between those two crazy people? I was like, is it just me? Is it just me? Should I leave the room? Do we need to get these people a room? And Nina, do you have them? I mean, don't do it on Alexis's, uh, on Alexis's desk, but dang, guys. I'm sorry. I might be saying I'm going too far, but the fire between those two, that was hot it was better than the fire between him and carly since the him and carly ever even thought about him and carly i like him this energy with nina better than i like his energy with sam i just was blown away i i need some car i need some nina and drew i need some nina and drew action honey because that that would <laughs> it was giving boo boos but let's talk oops let's talk about today's show sorry about that now so drew oh we gonna talk about it so Drew visits Nina, and she offers to call security because, you know, Drew's been all angry man toward her. Who can blame her? And she's trying to upload an article on Alexis's computer. You know, it's a gossip article. And Drew helps her out with the password on Alexis's debts. And you know what, guys? I, I thought to myself, Nina has a very hard time at working at her own desk. Have y'all noticed that? I mean, like, at... The Metro Court, which she's actually at the Metro Court. When she's at the Metro Court, she's always at Olivia's desk. Always at Olivia's desk. And now, 
she's at the invader and now she is using alexis uh, we have yet to even <laughs> the only time we ever seen this woman have a desk is when she was at uh crimson anyway and i'm pretty sure alexis ain't gonna like the fact that nina's all on her desk trying to upload stuff that she hasn't proofread or looked into because that's what nina's trying to do she doesn't want alexis to, to, to trash her um her, her uh, newest gossip article and I wrote down in highlights, Nina and Drew, fire, 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 hot. Yes, it was fire. Y'all know it was fire. Mm. Anyway, they discussed Nina working at Crimson, and she don't like it. I mean, they, they discussed Nina working at The Invader, and she don't like it as much. It's not the job she was actually born to do, and she does miss working at Crimson. Nina also teases that Carly is failing at Crimson, which, oddly enough, Drew is still madly defending. It's just, this conversation, I don't know, guys, is Drew, is, is, Drew, is Drew, is he a little bipolar-ish? I don't know, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, Drew tells Nina that she was good at Crimson, because she likes selling lies. <laughs> well... Well, that's not so good at working at an actual news or a newspaper where you have to, you know, sell truths. And he might have put it differently, but that's how I'm going to summarize it. Y'all, you know, of course, I might have gotten that differently, but that's pretty much what I summarized. Um, oh, and then he tells her that he fired Carly. <laughs> I mean, because he actually pushed her and she was never the right fit. And I'm like, this sack of... This sack of lard. Why do you even? They could have took in crimson and handed it to somebody else that would have done it. You know who would have wanted it. But you you gonna sit here and just kind of you know he didn't shred Carly to her. But that you didn't. All you had to do is say she um she never wanted the job and all that other stuff. You the one forced her into it. I'm glad he did admit that part. And he kept telling Nina that when she kept sliding into the fact that Carly wanted it. No, Carly was you know she did this for me. Anyway, um, Nina assumes that Carly dumped Drew, and she just loves it. She's just like, oh, so how did that happen? What happened when, you know, I can't be the only one getting abused and beat up on? And I'm like, Nina, people are abusing and beating up on you, boo-boo, because, because you kind of deserve it, you know? kind of deserve it you know you you get petty petty comes back on you now, like i always say you, you go to go go for revenge be prepared to bring two shovels anywho um and it was odd and maybe that's maybe drew didn't want nina to get a rise that he actually broke up with carly himself even though he could have still spun it like you know carly was still on top because she's got jason because that's what Nina was thinking. Oh, so Jason's back, so Carly's dumping you. And he just was like, no, um, no. I, I don't even think he really addressed that. But it was weird that he allowed her to think that Carly dumped him. When, you know, we all know that he broke up with her. But maybe he didn't want Nina to have that win. That, cause that's the only thing I could think about it. Um, Drew then dangles crimson to Nina, unlike... Drew dangles crimson to Nina. I'm laughing because of what I wrote down. Um, and he and when she's talking about how he, you know, this Carly situation, he's like, unlike Carly, he only feels red, hot rage and contentment. <laughs> but you are good at running crimson, and possibly, you know, you could become editor in chief. And when he said this, I, I turned around. I was like, Nina, you need to tell him to pack his long neck ass on and take his brokenness and his stupidityness and putting his heart in the middle of this, firing me and letting me go from crimson ass and sell that, sell that boat up another river. Bye, bitch. Bye. Nina should have told him to get to stepping. Are you serious? You fire me? Humiliate me? Have me working at a place I don't want to be, but I'm doing it because I am a boss? No, I am sorry. I'm staying right here. And you can figure out what you're going to do with Crimson on your own. 
You did you did this. It's on you. It's not on me. I'm gone. Everybody knows I'm gone. Everybody knows you fired me. If I was Nina, I would not take that back. I would rock out Invader. We all know Alexis is trying to leave. She can have Invader run her smut, put whatever she wants to do. Turn on the whole entire city of uh, poor Charles if she wants. But to go back under Drew? It, excuse me? And she even says it. Nina ain't trying to work with no angry man. I'm like, exactly. And he like, well, I don't have time for a scratch and nip, a scratch and sniff issue every thirty days. And that's why you shouldn't have done what you did. That's why you shouldn't have put your heart where your pocket was. You should have just left that going, and you should have attacked Nina some other way. In fact, you shouldn't have attacked Nina at all, bro, because she was already gonna, she was already losing everything like dominoes. You the one petty. Taking crimson for her. You didn't have to do that shit. That's, you could have left her like that. She didn't have Sunny. She didn't give a damn about that magazine. Even though she keeps saying, my baby. Girl, it's either my husband. Or it's my baby. Or it's Sunny. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? Lena is a person you just love to hate. What can I say? Um. And then he tells her that she got to work with Carly. Half and half with Carly. And I love how she trolled Carly when she called it. She said, I ain't doing none of this uh, trashy biker chick style. And I was like, mm, actually, that's Sam, not Carly. Carly's more of the sweater or cardigan, like, you know, top with some nice jeans, some, you know, some nice little jeans, show her little booty. You know what I'm saying? Her hair, though, her hair be. Carly got the best hair on there. Then it's Anna. I mean, Carly got some, and then Brooklyn. No, Brooklyn got some beautiful hair too. You know, but Carly's hair, full and beautiful every time. I don't know what that woman does, but she get it going. Okay, but when she said that she didn't want no biker, trashy biker style kind of giggle, because I could see where Nina would, you know, she just always oh, so petty. So then Drew's like, okay, fine, and you know, Crimson could sink, and I don't care. I can sell it or whatever, and he walks away. And the only thing, because Nina still tells him to wait. Wait, are you selling it? I'll buy it. Nina and Eris, somebody corrected me. I was calling her Hyris. I still like saying that word, but anyway. Um, she, she, can, uh, she, she can buy it. She don't need nobody money. I don't like the fact that they're making her do that, but whatever. I guess, you know, she wants to keep her money. Rich people are cheap. I guess that's what I, that's what I was told. But moving along, we're going to go over to the photo shoot, guys. This photo shoot, it pissed me off. It pissed me off. Um, I found myself championing Lucy a lot, and, and back in the day when Lucy was on, I couldn't stand her. I couldn't. She was so petty and messy, I couldn't stand her. But here I am, champion Lucy once again. So, um, Sasha did look good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, first of all, Sasha was bad in all black. It was it was trimming, her face was popping, the eye makeup was popping, the red, the earrings, she was look and the side pony so I said my girl was looking good honey okay so i was a little confused by the fact that the bell pole was not had bell pole's photo photo director and the photographer were not happy because they said that she was too soft that she was too wholesome too innocent i'm like really what what what, what she was giving a serious look she was beautiful i i don't get it. I, I, me personally, I don't get it. Lucy tried to break it down. Like, look, they, they just want you to be more edgy, you know, you know, give more attitude, you know, like Paris Hilton attitude. That's what that, that's where they going with. I'm pretty sure that's what they were going with is Paris Hilton attitude. Whereas I don't have to be here. You're begging me to be here. Confidence, cocky. That's what they were going with. And Sasha was wholesome and beautiful. And I'm like, I didn't, she's beautiful, but I didn't get wholesome. In that outfit and how she was looking with the painted eyes, cat eyes, cat eyes was smoking. My girl was looking tough, honey. She was looking tough. I, I loved it. I don't get it. But anyway, um, while they're doing that, Maxie is um getting the security updated by her boyfriend, Spinelli. <laughs> I guess she had to get him a, you know, a legit job. <laughs> and that's when Cody walks in. And I'm like, you know, I still don't like Cody. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like he'll get creep into my heart a little bit, and then he just creeps right back out. Like, in today's scene, 
everybody was in there, and I don't, I'm not sure what this scene was for. I, I don't even understand it. We're going to go back to uh, Bell Post photo shoot, and they're just not happy, and they actually canceled the shoot because Sasha is too, Sasha is too sweet and innocent, and they need edgy, and you know, rah. Hint, hint. That's when Blaze, Blaze would have been the perfect person for that photo shoot. If that, I don't really think, it, yeah, Blaze got a little edge to her. You know, she's a singer. She's a little rock and roll, a little rah-rah, or she hip-hop. I have no idea what genre Blaze is in, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing now, that girl can't say that. That girl can't sing. I said it. Meanwhile, they discussed the updated security codes to stop property theft. And Tracy brings up Lucy stealing the deceptor idea. And I just can't wait till it comes out that Lucy did not steal the deceptor idea, but that Tad the Chad dribbled it into her ears and she just sucked it up and made her own thing with it. That's what they that's what they loosen. And I hope they find out because then Tracy and Brooklyn gonna have to come to the table and be like they're sorry. Because I'm sorry, I don't look to Brooklyn or Tracy for fashion. But Lucy, my dear, and everything she do. Yeah. You know, y'all can y'all y'all can hate on Lucy all you want to, but she ain't dress, dressing like frumpy Brooklyn and frumpy Tracy at all. She coming in with the killer dresses, the killer heels. No, they might look like something out of the um, 357 or, or, or uh, Rainbow sometime. But that's only sometime. You know, that's just to show her amazing figure. <laughs> because the rainbow clothes, that's all they is for, you know. Hey, look at me. I put it together. But anyway, yeah, I'm like, did she say rainbow? Oh, I sure did. Um, and then they talking about... Um, um, property theft, but nobody else mentioned the fact that Brooklyn and Tracy were the ones who did it. Brooklyn, I'm not Tracy, well, yes, Tracy put Brooklyn up to do the property theft. I'm like, y'all talking about Lucy bagging on her and everything. We got the thief right here. Brookie, thief, right here. You're the reason why we have to get updated security codes because you got on Maxie's computer and did it. I'm just so tired of people trying to trash and uplift everybody else and we looking at the problem right here. I'm with Trey. I'm with Lucy. Yeah, I don't even know why y'all. I don't know why your front. I would look at Brooklyn like, girl, you have. You need to take. We see in your wedding dress. We see what your style is. You and your your grandma and her and her vest coat. Need to go somewhere. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I don't care. Y'all ain't got to agree. I'm just, that's how I feel, and I'm going to stand by it. I'm standing on it. <laughs> I don't care. I was so mad they were dogging on Lucy today. It was just pissing me off. So, um, so, then we go get, so, let's see. Where was, where was I at? So somehow they end up blaming Lucy once they get all to the office, you know, because Sasha was too wholesome and she, and cause this is what, this is what Lucy is say, saying. Sasha was too wholesome and radiant and nice. Then everyone starts hating on Lucy like she says something bad and Cody gets in his feeling and quits. And I wrote down bye bitch cause you know, we didn't need you anyway. Just like Lucy said, you just was some field hand. That stumbled along with some straw. I mean, how long can the pretty boy with the blonde locks last? I agree with her on that one. And then, of course, they really get mad at her then. And then now uh, Sasha's like, oh, well, maybe, you know, what with everything that Cody said, maybe modeling's not for me either. Bye, bitch. <laughs> you can go, too. And we can hire Blaze. Okay? And it's so funny because that's who Lucy, wasn't it Lucy that wanted Blaze? Wasn't it Lucy that won in Blaze? I think it was Lucy that... Y'all let me know if it was Lucy that won in Blaze. But all I kept hearing is, Belpo wants Blaze, not Sasha. You said you were going to bring two faces to the face of deception. You made Blaze feel some type of way and she walked. Now you out of all faces and I still need a face. And I think Blaze would still be a good idea for it. I can't remember. Was it Brooklyn that won in Blaze? I can't remember. No, it wasn't Brooklyn that won in Blaze. I think it was. It was Lucy. 
And yes, guys, I know I shouldn't say bye, bitch, to Sasha. That's my girl. But if you're going to follow behind a goofy-ass dude that works in, work, that works in, 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 in a horse place as a horse guy, and you go ahead and do that. She got money anyway. She got stock in, uh, crim she got stop, stop in, st uh, stock in deception. I mean, you know, not money like they used to, but they getting back up there. And I wrote, this is why they should have hired Blaze. Oh, and Sasha talking about, what is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, Tasha talking about, Tasha, Sasha now is talking about quitting and they, uh, everybody blames <laughs> Lucy. And I just rolled my eyes on that. I was like, this is so whack. So then we're going to get over to General Hospital because this was another weird, this was a weird one, guys. And y'all let me know what y'all think. Heather's being prepped for surgery, and Laura comes in for support. Can somebody explain to me what in the hell is going on with Laura? Laura Lou, I think we need to do a, a, a self-reach out, help, reach her out to Laura Lou. Like a praying hand or something. Because she done lost her... Mother F and mine. I I, I I don't know if she's feeling guilty because of the Esme thing, which she should not. But Heather, boo, all the things that Heather done done to you and your grandkids and your grandson, Danny. Wasn't it Heather that somebody said Heather about, I don't know, I can't remember. I remember reading something about Heather holding the Danny. And I, could, I forgot I was, it was her holding Danny over the edge and. I'm, we can, I mean, we can go back in time about Heather and her stuff. I just sitting here looking. I'm like, they really, they really go, gonna privilege this one out. So, um, I wrote, we're all confused, and then I wrote, are y'all confused with me? I'm confused. I, I'm severely confused about where this is going. They discuss hair, Heather's other life. Laura comes and I comes combs her hair, and I'm sitting here still confused. They discuss co uh, Heather brings up co-parenting and you know ear and Ace's ear infection being cleared up. They also do a lot of discussion about the past. By Heather does a lot of discussion about her passing and surgery, and this makes me wonder if she's gonna make it through surgery. I don't know, guys. The, the writers they're new. I mean, we got a new kind of genre going on with the writing staff, so I don't know if that's gonna happen. But yeah. That was a lot of talk about that. That's what made me kind of question, like, hey, they're going to make this surgery. And Laura reminds her that us Webbers got to stick together. And I'm sitting here like, what in the hell is going on? Am I here? Have we been kidnapped by aliens? <laughs> they discuss Esme and making better choices at the beginning. And Laura missed to Heather that she wasn't crazy. No, that she wasn't crazy, crazy all her life. And I'm like, really? Okay. Heather asks what happens after surgery and does she still got to go to prison? Why, can, so, girl, what? <laughs> so you ought to, see, I'm not, this is, why are you asking that question? You should not even care. You should just be caring about waking up from surgery, Heather. Oh, but yeah, at least, you know, they got TVs in California so she can, you know, at least watch her show Jeopardy. And I rolled when she said that because I was like, girl, because you're not, you're a lot smarter than you playing, Heather. Only smart people want to watch Jeopardy, okay? <laughs> Laura asked Kevin, can Heather, when, oh, so they, they will off Heather to surgery. And Laura asked, Ke, Laura asked Kevin, can Heather come back to normality? You know, can she, after surgery, can she, you know, flip the switch and she's okay again? And Kevin's like, uh, she's been manic and nuts for a long time. This is almost like normal behavior for her is to be this way. And Laura's like, well, you know, you never know. I mean, with change and therapy and time, maybe she could come somewhat back. And I'm looking at her like, oh my gosh, you are as daffy as they have been writing you for the past couple of months. Laura, you need to go and have a long conversation with your writers and tell them to stop. Demand them to stop making you this daffy. 
you got too much grain in the tooth. You've been around the block too many times. You even mentioned your own mental health. And then you try to say, well, I had support. This is true. But like Kevin said, you weren't out here killing and unaliving and terrorizing and torturing people. Well, I don't know about the torture, but, you know, I guess torture people with your craziness. I don't know. But you weren't out here terrorizing people. It's a big difference. And I'm just sitting here like, hey, Kevin, are you really going to do this? And what does he do? I'm going to look and see if there's any cases that can overturn Heather's thing. I'm like, you know what? Okay, this, this, this. And maybe it won't happen. Maybe Heather won't make surgery. Maybe this is all just me just doing nothing for nothing. But what the hell, guys? Come on. For real? Make it make sense. I can't believe Laura Lou right now. Laura Lou fans. I love me some Laura Lou. I, I wouldn't say I'm a dedicated fan. Because she's always was too goody-goody two-shoe for me. Yeah, she always was to me. I mean, even when she was kind of wild, she still was to me. Uh, but, guys, for real. Y'all need to reach out to y'all girl and talk to her and be like, girl, you need to tell your writers to stop right away. We gonna move along because all I had was what the fuck moments through that whole entire scene. We gonna go, okay, so guys, y'all gonna be mad at me. I did not take a lot of notes for this one because I was just like, oh, what? Did they wasted our time with this story. <laughs> no story is a waste of time, but come on, guys. And this is the this is the general hospital when they we find out um, that there has been some medication description and the list, the log is showing short on antibiotics. And of course, Willow's sitting right there, which was probably good that she was there so she can get a hold of it. But Willow freaks out because of course this could fall on Elizabeth and she don't want Elizabeth to lose her job. I mean, Elizabeth's done worse things like, you know, holding people kidnapped, I mean, holding people hostage or helping to hold people hostage in a tower so if she can get away with that i'm pretty sure she can get away with some missing medication but i'm a, i digress and i will go back to this side where we were talking about the story and liz elizabeth's like well maybe it's just a computer glitch and you know we'll see what's going on we'll do another you know whatever we'll have somebody do something i don't i can't remember because i was just like so willow um texas mike runs home mike they're gonna find out and even if they don't know it's me because they're not gonna find out it's me it's still gonna find on elizabeth and i don't want her to lose her job and what and what are we doing about jason anyway what is the what is the thing what are we going to do and i'm like girl you need to calm down first of all he might be a quarter man which that still helps he's also a corintho so he has people at disposal where he can call and make things go away so he, but Michael does tell her, you know, hey, look, I'm gonna have Jason's back. When I was in jail and some horrible things happened to me, Jason was the only one that kept me alive. That's not the only time. That's only not the only reason why Jason should have. He should have Jason. Jason was his first father. When Carly left because she was in postpartum, Jason was the one who was raising him. Into, well, not raising, raising him, but had him for the first year with Robin. But it was him mainly. You know what I'm saying? So, um, he's telling Willow this, like, I'm going to be loyal to him. And I, I'm going to fix this. And who, how does he fix it? He calls Spinelli. Spinelli, can you, can you break it to the hospital record? Which is highly, first of all, Spinelli is a genius. So we should not be shocked that he can do it. Because ha hacking into a hospital is not easy. Not easy at all. <laughs> not easy at all. Unless, of course, you are a master hacker like Spinelli. And Spinelli fixes it so that it does not show negative. But the only thing is if somebody actually decides to go and physically count those things, that's when we can run into problems. I don't know if that'll happen. We'll see. Who knows? Elizabeth might be the anal bee and go and find out. She did let Tracy know that we're all good to go and there's nothing to worry about. Sometimes it's easy to happen. But if somebody wants to be, I'm going to go check out and count the pills, that's where you can run into problems. It is what it is. But anywho, guys, I hope I didn't miss a story. I think I caught them all. But anyway, if I did, I apologize. But I will see you guys tomorrow. You are all amazing. Thank you for understanding I needed to take care of some things yesterday. But I'm back, and I missed you guys. Hope you have sleep well and have an amazing night tomorrow. I mean, amazing day tomorrow. Mwah.